Welcome back to the National Defense. It's Randy Miller. So excited to have back on the program, President George W. Bush. Mr. President, how are you? Randy, life's good. It's, uh, <laughs> thank you. We're, uh, I'm talking to you from Dallas, uh, the uh, uh, center of free enterprise. Uh, <laughs> but everything's good. The family's good. We're healthy. Uh, we're great. blessed. Thank you. Yeah, and you haven't driven a car in how long? Since 1993. Wow, that's amazing. You know, we, but I have I have ridden a mountain bike, and yes. I, I do it quite frequently. And this past weekend, uh, in order to celebrate my 75th year of life, uh, I invited uh, nine wounded vets down to ride at the ranch, and it was one of the great days. Of, oh, wow! Uh, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, just now awesome. you, you've done that before and it hasn't turned out very well. They show, they show you up on a regular basis, don't they? Well, they still do, but, uh, <laughs> but they were at least polite about it this year, but yeah, they're great. It's a, uh, what a wonderful group of people. And I consider them dear friends and, uh, and I consider them unbelievably important assets to the future of the country. Absolutely. You know, you celebrated that in your first portrait book, Profiles and Courage, which was fantastic. And just uh, got get, get such great aplomb from everybody. I mean, everybody, uh, every veteran uh, loved that. I'm, I'm sure every every veteran family has a copy of that book. And now you've got a, a new book, uh, Out of Many, One, celebrating right. immigrants, celebrating American immigrants and their inspiring stories of what they've become in America, right? Right. Uh, the reason I did this, Randy, is I'm real concerned about the tone of the immigration debate. It's very political. Right. Uh, it's a hot topic. And the tone got a little out of hand, in my judgment, on both sides. And I wanted to uh, try to maybe recalibrate people's thinking about the importance of immigration uh, to our country. And, and, as a res- and by changing the tone, I hopefully end up encouraging Congress to come together and create some solutions to uh, what is going to be necessary to enforce our border. And... Uh, but yeah, I was telling the stories of incredible people, and uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a beautiful country that attracts uh, people who suffered and uh, who are looking for a better life, and, and that's what America does. Well, it's a great book, and it and it's uh, it's not so far removed actually from your first book because a lot of immigrants uh, are, were the backbone of our our nation's military. Uh, I didn't know this, but during the uh, Civil War, more than twenty percent of Union soldiers were foreign born. And yeah. I mean, you go you go through history and you look at some of the uh, uh, the combats, and, and I mean, every every single engagement we've had are filled with uh, with immigrants. And I know you you profiled a very special one in your book, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a, a Medal of Honor winner. Uh, one of the things. Let me before we get to uh, get to him. Uh, the uh, I've been to a fair number of uh, naturalization ceremonies. And we had one down here in Dallas where uh, two of the people came wearing Marine uniforms Hmm. and they had been in combat. And as a result, uh, uh, you know, I'm thinking, wow, what a country it is where people are willing to serve to defend America and yet not be citizens. And so you're right. Right. There's been a uh, there's been a lot. And I want to show you the portrait I did. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, as, and as I understand it, the Medal of Honor winners, uh, a lot of them have come from uh, overseas. They weren't yeah, born I, in America. I think you're right. And and this is a, a, such an inspiring story of Flo, Flo, Groberg. Gro, Gro, Flo Groberg, captain, Medal of Honor recipient, served in Afghanistan, born in France, had an American father, an Algerian mother, and okay, here's what I love about that particular portrait. The first thing you see is is the Medal of Honor. That's right. And, and I love that. Thank you. Well, I painted it. Obviously, we, we call that monochromatic. Not not to be an artistic show. <laughs> now you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I didn't even know what that meant eight years ago. <laughs> but I wanted to highlight uh, the courage of a guy who was born in France yeah. and served alongside our troops. And, uh, and a way to do that was, and I also think it kind of, it, it kind of conveyed, uh, my vision of the special operators, you know, uh, kind of t- 
tough guys who right uh who, this guy uh, took out a suicide bomber yeah 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 incredible yeah he, he, he anyway he's a he's a very humble guy uh when we unveiled the portraits he came down uh with his girlfriend i think or maybe his wife i hope it uh, if it's his wife I, yeah wife Freddie tells me why he, 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 he was not his girlfriend. And, uh, his girlfriend and his wife came in. Yeah, that's right. Girlfriend and wife. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, he's a contributing member of society. He's a smart guy. And, but he was grateful. I think that I painted his picture and, uh, and he represented a lot of people who've served in our military. Uh, right. One of the, one of the guys I put in a book, the first the, the veterans book, the guy lost his leg, but he had snuck in America, you know, and right. he wanted to be a part of our society. And he served the military, lost his leg. And, you know, he's now helping others. And every one of these immigrants in this book were helped by somebody and they in turn help uh, once they get settled. And it's just important. Well, that, that's, the, that's the other point of that. Right. I mean, uh, immigrants come to this country, uh, become citizens it become uh, absolutely exceptional citizens yeah. and it le- and it leads to them helping in their communities and it's better for everybody. So I agree. I, I guess I've never really understood the, uh, the <laughs> debate uh, on, uh, on immigration. And this is your way. I, I think this is such a clever way. I think that you found to add to that discussion without really politicizing it. Yeah, that was the attempt, Randy. Thank you. Uh, I think on the political debate, uh, it's just very important to understand that, uh, you know, we people, American people expect our borders to be enforced. Uh, right. And the point I make in this book is that you, uh, a broken system makes it harder to enforce the border. Uh, right. And we got to fix the system so that the Border Patrol can do their job. But the, the rhetoric ought to be much more elevated than it has been. And my attempt here is to <laughs> talk about the beauty and the contribution. If, if people are worried about patriot patriotism, there's no more patriotic person. Oh, than somebody who comes and breathes, uh, breathes the fresh air of freedom here in the United States. Can I tell you a quick story about a guy that uh, lives around your parts? Uh, there's a, a boot company, great boot company called Twisted X Boots. OK, uh, and it's in Texas. When I worked for the VFW, uh, they were one of our, our main sponsors. And this man came over. I think he came over from India. He's an immigrant. Uh, became a citizen and tells a story about his becoming a citizen where during the ceremony, he started crying. Yeah. And, and after that, every pair of boots that he sells to anyone, he gives them a miniature copy of the U S constitution. There you now, go. Now, now, who do you know that is not an immigrant who does that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, these, these, these ceremonies are unbelievably emotional, uh, and it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. People from all over the world who paid their, you know, paid their dues and who finally get in uh, are just so proud. And one of my favorite things to say is, my fellow American, uh, you're no less or more American than me. And, uh, uh, and, you know, I haven't been the president. It adds a little, it gives a little extra home. <laughs> yeah, I would we're think, all equal. Well, you know, so I don't know how you, how you uh, selected the uh, individuals for this book and uh, out of many one, but that has to be a, uh, uh, a funny phone call to get is, Hey, yeah. uh, president, <laughs> president Bush wants to get, was to meet you. And he also wants to uh, paint your portrait. Right. Well, some of them I knew, you know, ahead of time, of course, but yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> we, we were very careful of who we selected because we, I wanted to know their stories before I painted them, obviously. Sure. And I, you can't paint, uh, empathetically without knowing the hardships or what they went through to get to America. But yeah, I'm sure there were some surprise people, but more importantly, uh, when we unveiled their portraits, some of them were really surprised. Uh, um, <laughs> but, they're, but they're so good. I mean, you're getting better. I mean, your, your first book was great, but you're getting better at this. I mean, you're like, I the, John, so. you're like the John Grisham of, uh, of art books now. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I work hard at it. And like anything, if you work hard in life, you can improve. And uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good lesson about uh, challenging life and challenge yourself in life and not atrophying, you know, not letting your mind right. waste. I never thought I'd ever be a painter. And uh, eight years ago, I started painting. 
And my wife knew I was never going to be a painter. <laughs> that's shocking to her. Uh, and uh, you, you never know what you can do in life until you try. So people listening to, to our conversation ought not to be afraid to try new things. Uh, well, we had Nora O'Donnell on the show right after uh, she yeah. interviewed you. And, uh, and she said that she talked to your wife and, and, and your wife actually said, I didn't think you'd be any good at this. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, well, she's shocked. <laughs> uh, Nora, um, Nora came down to my studio there at the ranch. And we had a wonderful right. time. She's a nice, very nice person. Well, you've got the number one uh, New York Times bestselling uh, book right now. Uh, who's selling more books, you or Michelle Obama? <laughs> Michelle Obama by far. <laughs> I mean, she, she uh, it, you know, I think my first book sold, you know, over three and a half million copies, or yeah. 3.4 million. She's at like 11 million copies. Wow. And I mean, yeah, she's a, she's a rock star in the literary world. And, uh, well, you, you know, uh, but what does that say about George W. Bush? I, I think it says uh, a lot about you too. Uh, the fact that, I mean, it, it's, it's a fascinating topic. It's a great book, but the fact that, uh, that people are, are buying it in droves, that has to make you feel pretty good. Well, it makes me feel, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it, it does make me feel good. The key thing, though, is that a lot of the proceeds from this book are going to the organizations that help uh, uh, refugees and asylum seekers. Yeah. And yeah. uh, that makes me feel good. Now, uh, this must be my week for uh, presidential families because we interviewed uh, Michael Reagan yesterday. Oh, yeah. From, and yeah. Uh, he, he had some great things to say about you. And, and had a, had a uh, especially cool story about the day that Reagan selected your dad. He wanted, he wanted to be, he wanted Michael to be in the room when that happened. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, pretty that's, cool. that's very cool. Mike's a good guy. His dad was a great leader. And, uh, you know, I got to know him, uh, as, a, as members of the, uh, sons of president's club. And, uh, <laughs> right. yeah, we got along just fine. I hope he's doing well. He's doing great. He's, uh, he's in charge of the uh, Reagan Legacy Foundation, so he's doing oh, great. And, uh, you know, his, his dad is going to be portrayed by Dennis Quaid in an upcoming movie here in a couple of months. Well, I hope, I hope that uh, Hollywood does him justice because he, yeah. was, a, he was a Me too. really good president. And, uh, so, so when they do the George W. Bush movie, who's going to play you? Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, that's good. <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to do a new segment, if you don't mind, called Got Your Six. Okay. Okay, these are uh, six rapid-fire questions for President George W. Bush. Ready? Yes. Most fun game you play with the grandkids? <laughs> uh, well, they're very young. Uh, let's see. Uh, reading. Reading it, re bedtime stories. Bedtime story. All right. Last time you talked to Joe Biden. Uh, he called me, uh, to thank me for something. And it was probably three weeks ago. Best dog you've ever had. Freddie, the current dog named for chief of staff, Freddie Ford. That's right. Who does the best impression of you? Is it Will Ferrell? You know, I didn't pay that close attention to it all, <laughs> but actually it was a guy named Steve Bridges, uh, who, oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He became a friend of mine. Unfortunately, he passed away, but he was by far the best George W. Bush. So, my, um, so I had a birthday party for my brother, Marvin, <laughs> at the White House, and I, I got Steve to come down, and uh, I was welcoming everybody, and Josh Bolton, uh, chief of staff, came and whispered in my ear, and so I said, excuse me, i got to go take an important phone call, and <laughs> left, and Bridges came back in as me. And uh, – ah. It That's was pretty. Uh, and funny. Fa favorite Cheney? Uh, Cheney? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I think the favorite Cheney was uh, <laughs> Cheney's an avid hunter. And uh, as I said, Nick, you're the only guy who, who you shot the only trial lawyer for me in Texas. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, but that was a that was a very difficult moment for Dick. He, he, actually, he didn't laugh much about it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah he's a really right. good, really good guy. And uh, what, what what is up with our military not getting vaccinated? First of all, thank you for your efforts in that. But yeah, what, I don't what, know. I don't either. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. I think that you know. I think that some people are just 
uh, there's some conspiracy out there that people listen sure. to. Sure. There's some anti-government sentiment, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, if government tells me to do it, I'm not going to do it. I mean, there's some independence, sure. sure. but I, I would hope that, uh, you know, people realize uh, it's a passport to freedom to right. get vaccinated. I mean, I, it changed my outlook for sure. And what uh, could you call Joe Biden and have him come on this show to tell the, the men and women of the armed forces that they need to get vaccinated? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think I, my, if I were to advise him on your show, I'd say, look people in the eye and tell them, thank you for volunteering and we'll make sure your families are taken care of. Absolutely. And and just the, the final thing I have for you, Mr. President, uh, what do you think about the, uh, the withdrawal from Afghanistan? Uh, I think that it's treacherous. Uh, our soldiers sacrificed a lot to enable over 3 million girls and women to begin to realize their rightful place in society. Uh, it, 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 uh, not only did they act to deny safe haven to a bunch of extremists who attacked us, but in so doing, they enabled uh, people to realize potential. And that is now going to be jeopardized. Uh, and so I'm deeply concerned about how the Taliban, if they regain power, uh, treats women. And it, 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 it should concern our nation. Right. We're, we're a nation that believes in human dignity and that all lives matter. And uh, so I'm concerned about it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it started in the previous administration. This administration continues on. One of the lessons in Iraq was when we precipitately pulled out, it enabled and empowered uh, extremist groups like right. what was Al Qaeda, now ISIS. And uh, we had to go back in. But the thing here is about the U.S. military. Nobody can defeat us. And right. we provide such great stability, uh, particularly for countries that are trying to get their footing. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm worried. Well, Mr. President, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the for the books. Uh, Out of many, one is the, the current book. Uh, and now you've done two books now for un heralded segments of our population. I've, I've got an idea for your third one. What is it? Portraits of radio DJs. Ha! You know what? Those faces would be hard to paint because they've got faces <laughs> made for radio. <laughs> and with that, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Randy. <laughs>